Ever wondered why some people seem to have more hours in their day? Perhaps you found yourself drowning in tasks, unsure of where to start or rushing from one urgent deadline to the next. You're not alone. These are common struggles in our fast-paced world where the pressure to do more with less time is a constant challenge. Procrastination, a lack of prioritization, and the overwhelming feeling of always being behind the clock, these are all signs of ineffective time management. And the truth is, without effective time management, not only does productivity take a hit, but stress levels can skyrocket too. But imagine a different scenario where you're in control of your time, where you're able to distinguish the truly important from the merely urgent, and where stress is a thing of the past. If you've ever felt like there's not enough time in the day, the time matrix system might be your solution. Stephen Covey's time matrix system is a game changer in managing our daily tasks. This ingenious system has its roots in Covey's principles of time management, revered by many as a gold standard in organizing and prioritizing tasks. Picture a matrix, a square divided into four equal quadrants. Each quadrant represents a different type of task we encounter in our day-to-day -day life. Quadrant 1 is the home of tasks that are both urgent and important. These are the tasks that require immediate attention and have a significant impact on our lives or work. The firefighting zone, if you will. Quadrant 2 houses tasks that are important but not urgent. This quadrant is where strategic thinking and long-term planning live. It's the planning and preparation zone. Quadrant 3 is for tasks that are urgent but not important. These tasks demand our attention but they don't contribute significantly to our long-term goals or values. This is the zone of distraction. And finally, Quadrant 4 is for tasks that are neither urgent nor important. This quadrant is a bit of a time sink, filled with activities that may feel like a break, but don't necessarily add value to our lives. It's the zone of triviality. Each quadrant has its unique characteristics and understanding these quadrants, their pros and cons is crucial in mastering our time. The aim is to balance our tasks across these quadrants to ensure we are not just responding to urgency, but also giving due importance to tasks that contribute to our long-term goals and personal development. Understanding these quadrants is the key to mastering your time. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into each quadrant, explore their characteristics, and learn how we can better manage our tasks using the time matrix system. Quadrant 1 is the domain of urgent and important tasks. This quadrant is the realm of the immediate and critical. It's where fires are fought, deadlines loom, and crises arise. It's the quadrant of now or never, the do or die. These tasks demand our attention and often they can't be ignored or postponed. Imagine a day where every task is a high-stakes game, where everything demands your immediate attention. That project deadline you've been pushing off? It's due today. The client meeting you've been dreading? It's in an hour. The report your boss asked for? It's needed in 10 minutes. This is the reality of Quadrant 1, where each task is both urgent and important. But here's the thing about Quadrant 1. It's a place of high stress and anxiety. It's where burnout lurks in the shadows. When you're constantly putting out fires, you don't have the time or energy to focus on the things that truly matter. You're caught in a reactive mode, always responding, never initiating. It's a whirlwind of activity, but it's not necessarily productive. Yet many of us spend a significant portion of our time in quadrant one. We get caught up in the rush, the adrenaline of urgency, but in the long run, this isn't sustainable. We need to balance our time and energy to ensure we're not just reacting to the urgent but also focusing on the important. So, how do we do this? By recognizing that not all tasks are created equal. Some tasks are important but not urgent, some are urgent but not important. The key is to identify which is which and to prioritize accordingly. It's about understanding that while Quadrant 1 tasks are crucial, they're not the be-all and end-all. There's a whole other world outside Quadrant 1, and it's up to us to explore it. Effective time management means not living in Quadrant 1. It means understanding the difference between urgency and importance, between reaction and proaction. It's about creating a balance, a harmony, in the way we approach our tasks and our time. And that, dear listeners, is the first step towards mastering the time matrix. Quadrant 2 is where the magic happens. It's the space for not urgent but important tasks. This is the quadrant of proactivity, of planning, of foresight. It's where we engage in activities that don't demand our immediate attention, yet they hold immense value for our personal and professional growth. Think of Quadrant 2 as the foundation for your success. It's the home for strategic planning, for creating those long-term goals that set the direction for where you want to go in life. 
It's where you nurture your relationships, both personal and professional, building a network of support and collaboration. It's the quadrant for learning and developing new skills, for personal growth and self-improvement. In the hustle and bustle of life, these tasks often get sidelined. They don't scream for your attention like a ringing phone or a looming deadline, but neglecting these tasks comes with a high price. Ignoring strategic planning can leave you directionless, skipping over relationship building can lead to isolation, and disregarding personal growth can stunt your potential. The beauty of Quadrant 2 tasks is that they're under your control. You decide when to work on them, they're not dictated by external pressures or immediate demands. This gives you the power to manage your time effectively, to prioritize tasks that align with your goals and values. Spending more time in Quadrant 2 has a ripple effect. The more you engage in strategic planning, the less likely you are to face crises that push you into Quadrant 1. The more you invest in relationship building, the more support you'll have when you need it. And the more you focus on personal growth, the better equipped you'll be to handle whatever comes your way. So how do you spend more time in Quadrant 2? Start by identifying the tasks in this quadrant, then schedule them into your day. Make them non-negotiable. Protect this time as you would any important appointment. Remember, Quadrant 2 is not about being busy, it's about being productive. It's not about getting things done, it's about getting the right things done. Spending time in Quadrant 2 is investing in your future. Quadrant 3 can be a tricky one. It's the realm of tasks that are urgent, but not important. Picture this, you're in the middle of drafting a business proposal when your phone buzzes with a social media notification. It's urgent in the sense that it demands your immediate attention, but is it important? Probably not. This quadrant is often filled with interruptions and distractions that seem immediate and pressing, but don't contribute to your long-term goals or values. Think about those endless emails that require prompt replies but don't really move the needle, or those meetings that could have been an email. The pesky thing about Quadrant 3 tasks is that they often masquerade as Quadrant 1 tasks. They appear urgent, and so we feel compelled to act. But let's be clear, spending too much time in Quadrant 3 is like running on a treadmill. You're moving, sure, but you're not really getting anywhere. You might be busy, but not necessarily productive. It's the perfect recipe for burnout without the satisfaction of meaningful progress. So, how do we deal with Quadrant 3 tasks? The first step is to identify them. Ask yourself, is this task truly important or is it just urgent? If it's the latter, it's time to reassess. Can it be delegated? Can it wait? Or perhaps can it be avoided altogether? The goal isn't to eliminate all Quadrant 3 tasks. That's unrealistic. Instead, the goal is to manage them effectively so they don't end up managing you. Remember, time is a finite resource. Every minute spent on an unimportant task is a minute taken away from something that truly matters. Now this doesn't mean you should ignore all urgent matters. Instead, it's about discerning the urgent from the important and making conscious decisions about where to invest your time and energy. So the next time you're faced with an urgent task, pause for a moment. Ask yourself, is this truly important? Because remember, not all that is urgent is important. Quadrant 4 is the zone of procrastination, filled with tasks that are neither urgent nor important. They're the sneaky time consumers that seem harmless, but can quickly devour hours of your day. These are activities like binge-watching TV shows, endless scrolling through social media or engaging in idle gossip. They are comfort zones that offer little value in terms of personal growth or productivity. Now don't get me wrong, we all need downtime. Relaxation and leisure are vital for maintaining balance in our lives, but when these activities start to encroach on time that could be better spent on tasks in Quadrant 2, that's when we wander into the territory of time wastage. The tricky part about Quadrant 4 is that its tasks are often enjoyable. They're easy to justify because they're fun or relaxing. But remember, just because something is enjoyable doesn't mean it's beneficial in the long run. It's like eating junk food. It tastes great in the moment, but too much of it can lead to health problems down the line. The key to managing Quadrant 4 is awareness. Be mindful of how much time you're spending on these tasks and whether they're infringing on your productivity. Set boundaries for leisure activities and stick to them. Allocate specific time slots for relaxation, and when that time is up, move on to more productive tasks. Another way to tackle Quadrant 4 is to replace time-wasting activities with ones that are more enriching but still enjoyable. Instead of spending hours on social media, why not read a book? Instead of binge-watching TV, why not go for a walk or learn a new skill? By doing so, you're still relaxing, but in a way that contributes to your personal growth. 
Remember, time is a finite resource. Once it's gone, you can't get it back. So be vigilant about how you spend your time, and don't let Quadrant 4 activities rob you of your potential. Beware of the time thieves lurking in Quadrant 4. Now that we've broken down the time matrix, how can you apply it in your daily life? Well, let's dive in. Firstly, start by listing down your tasks. All of them, big or small. Once you have them all written down, the next step is to categorize these tasks into the four quadrants of the time matrix based on urgency and importance. In quadrant 1, place the tasks that are both urgent and important. These are the tasks that need your immediate attention. They are often crisis-oriented like deadlines or pressing problems. Quadrant 2 is for tasks that are important but not urgent. These tasks are crucial for your long-term goals and personal growth. They may include planning, relationship building, or self-improvement activities. In Quadrant 3 you'll find tasks that are urgent but not important. These tasks seem to demand immediate attention but they don't necessarily align with your goals or values. They could include some emails, phone calls, or interruptions that can be delegated or managed differently. And finally, Quadrant 4 is for tasks that are neither urgent nor important. These are activities that do not contribute to your goals or values. They could be time-wasting activities that you can limit or eliminate. Now here comes the challenging part, prioritizing. The key is to focus more on Quadrant 2. These are activities that contribute most to your long-term success and happiness. By spending more time on these tasks, you'll find that you're less likely to fall into the crisis of Quadrant 1. Remember, the time matrix is not about cramming more tasks into your day. It's about simplifying what you do by doing what matters most. It's about achieving more by doing less. It's about mastering your time to master your life. So why not give it a try? Start categorizing your tasks now and see how it changes your perspective and improves your productivity. And always remember, mastering your time means mastering your life. So to conquer your time, you need to understand the time matrix. Let's quickly recap what we've covered today. The time matrix system, inspired by Stephen Covey's principles of time management, is a four-quadrant structure that helps us classify our tasks based on their urgency and importance. Quadrant 1, the urgent and important quadrant, is our crisis mode. It involves tasks that demand immediate attention. These are the fires we must put out right away. However, spending too much time here can lead to stress and burnout. Quadrant 2, the not urgent but important quadrant, is where we ideally want to be. This quadrant represents tasks that matter in the long run. Spending time here leads to vision, balance, and effective results. Remember, what's important is seldom urgent, and what's urgent is seldom important. Quadrant 3, the urgent but not important quadrant, is the realm of interruptions and distractions. It's easy to mistake these tasks as important because they're urgent, but they contribute little to our goals. Learning to delegate or say no is key here. Quadrant 4, the not urgent and not important quadrant, is the trap of wasted time. These activities offer little to no value and should be minimized or eliminated. The time matrix is not just a tool, it's a perspective shift. It's about understanding that not all tasks are created equal and learning to prioritize what truly matters. It's about balancing urgency with importance, and it's about making conscious choices about how we spend our time. By mastering the time matrix, you can increase productivity, reduce stress, and gain control over your time. It's not about doing more, it's about doing what matters. So, let's start today. Let's define our quadrants, classify our tasks, and make the shift from being busy to being effective. With the time matrix you can transform your time management and unlock your full potential.